Hello and welcome to Report Preview. My name is Jan Tensetov um, and I'll be providing some highlights of uh, a recent publication. I just want to start by highlighting some of the key questions that this report w uh, answers. So first of all, what are the key drivers impacting the profitability of prepaid operators? Secondly, how can revenues be stimulated in prepaid markets? So looking at driving subscriber acquisition, um, churn reduction, uh, demand stimulation, um, and then also looking at the cost side, how they can be minimized in, in prepaid markets. Uh, and then finally also taking a look at how, how data services can be best positioned in, in prepaid markets and indeed help in terms of, uh, for instance, reducing churn or, or um, increasing subscriber acquisition. Slide three, just to just to provide some context. Um, so prepaid subscriptions are expected to increase from 3.29 billion at the end of 2009 to 4.73 billion in 2014, um, really providing the the big growth area for for mobile subscriptions going forward. Um, so prepaid increases its um, the portion of total subscriptions um, from just under 60% in 2005 to just over 71% in 2009 um, and increasing marginally to, to just over 73% in, in 2014. So certainly the, the biggest opportunity and the biggest growth area for, for mobile uh, going forward. So in slide four here, we have a graphic showing um, the EBITDA margin vertically versus the, the monthly ARPS um, on the horizontal axis. Um, and what, what, what this really shows is that um, high, high average revenue per su subscription does not automatically equate to high profitability. So we've identified two, two groups here. So um, on, on the upper left part, you can see that um, even though there's, there's a low, you know, below $15 ARPS, um, even below $10 ARPS, there's still a very high 40% uh, plus a bit of margin, um, while there are also <clears throat> operators with, with $20, $25 ARPs with very low um, EBITDA margins. So um, so there's not a clear connection between the two. Um, typically, for for the higher um, ARPs levels, it, it does have some connection, but for, for every dollar you go below $15 or $10, this connection breaks down. Um, and what, what, what became, what becomes clear is that it's, it's more um, the scale of the operator than the, than the level of ARPS which determines profitability as we'll see in the next slide. So here we're looking at um, the EBITDA margin on the horizontal axis versus the, the subscription share of the operator and here you can see a clear correlation between the two so, so the, 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 the higher the market share typically um, equates to a higher EBITDA margin. And what's interesting as well is that this can be taken a step further. So it's not only subscription share, it's actually really the, the degree of control over, over traffic flows, um, which very much determines an operator's level of EBITDA margin. And indeed, the more on-net traffic um, versus off-net traffic it can control, uh, the higher its EBITDA margin. So this is really a critical point. Um, critical foundation for, for the profitability in, in, in prepaid markets. Subscriber acquisition is, of course, always important in, in prepaid markets where there's there are high churn levels. It's always important for operators to be attracting new subscriptions in order to maintain and in, indeed increase their, their market share. But also by minimizing churn, um, that is also helping, of course, to, to, to maintain a high share of the market. Um, of course, typically in prepaid markets, uh, churn levels are high because of a number of different factors. Lower incomes uh, result in, in higher price sensitivity, um, the higher instance of multiple SIMs, and the fact that there are daily price promotions to attract um, a user to use different um, to use a different operator. Um, so to address these issues, operators implement a, a range of different churn, <coughs> churn reduction programs. Um, first of all, demand stimulation. So this is very much about maintaining um, users as, uh, as active users on, their, on the network. Um, so typically on net um, price promotions is, is uh, very commonly seen in, in, in prepaid markets, discounted airtime. So if you use a certain amount of, of minutes per month and then top up, then you will get additional airtime as, as a typical one. 
Um, zone-based pricing is something we've seen very much in, in Africa and, and, and spreading from there to other emerging markets as well, a very profitable way of, of, of driving demand stimulation um, and, and, and in, in letter, in, in some instances, also prepaid credit. So actually when the, when the credit runs out, that the operator will provide a, a limited amount of, of credit for, for, for the user to, to make additional calls. Secondly, also there are a number of CRM systems and policies where we've seen a lot more investment in emerging markets, so churn prediction systems, able to predict when a, when a user might is, more, is most likely to churn and therefore the operator can, can take action in, in order to, uh, to stop that. Um, proactive CRM calls in order, in order to, um, uh, to address issues and to promote usage um, and support number prioritization. So, so um, users can, can get in touch with the operator um, uh, through, through a particular number. And then, and then finally, uh, a number of exclusive or, or sticky services, typically data services that we've identified. Um, payments is, 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 a, is a critical one. Uh, again, in, in Africa, we've seen a lot of developments there. Um, uh, the, the great example is Safaricom's M-Pesa service, um, which, um, you know, which really reduced their churn levels, even though they have a very significant portion of the market. Um, email as well, some operators offering um, even free email access, but, but it's very, very much a churn reduction tool. Um, some exclusive information services um, and, and other value-added services which, which, also, um, which also limit churn and, and really make uh, uh, differentiate one of operator's offering from, from another. So those are some of the, the, some of the, the revenue side <coughs> elements that we've seen but we've also looked at the cost side. And one of the important things we've seen is really that the, 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 the growth in, in costs is, is higher than the growth in, in revenue. Um, as you can see in, in the graphic here, we've taken a number of different examples of, of operators, um, growth in, in revenues versus growth in costs. And of course, you know, higher high growth in costs results in, in lower margin. And this is a key factor that many operators are having to deal with in, in prepaid markets. This is largely driven by the increase in network costs. Um, so as network expands, um, as networks expand, the costs increase. Um, so it's important for, for technology to be used wisely in order to, to reduce those costs. Um, I think one of the, the big challenges is, of course, the growth in data traffic, um, which, which drives the need for, for more backhaul investments. Um, there's the ongoing issue with energy costs and, and, and reliability, which, which is an ongoing cost for operators. Um, as well as operators investing in their own transmission network. Um, and, uh, and of course, one of the key areas we've seen a lot of developments in is, is, is network sharing and network outsourcing, whereby operators can, can reduce their network costs. So those are some of the things uh, just to highlight of the report. Um, there are my details if, you, if you're interested in, in anything more. Um, many thanks for your time today.